Well, so now we have all the ingredients that we need to create the any revolute joint because we have the ground frame and now we have the reference node on the segment which will serve as our second reference frame. So let's go about writing the code to create the joint itself. Now, just like we did with the segment where we defined segment one inside the file segment.any, we are going to write the code for the joint in a new AnyScript file. And for this, I will go up there in the toolbar and click on this button, which opens up a new AnyScript file that I will then be saving as joint.any. Now in joint.any, uh, I will again open the classes tab that you see on the left of your scripting window. I will expand the class list and scroll all the way down to any revenue joint because now the, the time has finally come for us to include this particular code in our model. So I'm going to insert the class template and over here we have some placeholder text. So it asks me for an object name and I'm going to name this ground under, underscore segment underscore joint or segment one because that is the name of the exact model components which are being connected by this revolute joint. We have a few optional parameters over here because, which have been commented out with the double forward slash and we'll just delete them for now for the sake of readability. And over here, we have two mandatory members which came with the class template. These weren't commented out. And you can see that these are the type any ref frame, which were the, also the two expected members that we uh, saw being mentioned in the reference manual. So for now, just for the sake of readability, I'm going to put some space between these two any ref frames. And let us try filling out the, the text or whatever information we need to define the first reference frame that is up here. Now it asks me for a name over here and this name could be anything, pretty much literally anything because the name of this particular object does not matter. And I will tell you why in just a minute. So I'm going to call this ground and over here this, there is a second set of placeholder text. And this says that I need to insert the name of object reference or full object definition. So this means that I need to insert the name of the ground frame object over here. Now we've already created the ground frame object and if I could just ask you to have a look at the model tree on the left, you can see that the ground frame object is right up here. So if I were to look back at the any script window and delete this placeholder text, I could simply type in ground frame right here and things should be good. The answer is no, things aren't good right now. Because when you have a complex model, it could be that the ground segment one joint is defined in a completely different section of the model tree. And so if we just say that we are looking for uh, this particular frame, the ground frame to be the one of the reference frames, uh, any script can find it extremely difficult to find to actually find this particular object in the model tree. So we need to be a little more precise and actually mention the exact address of the object ground frame in the model tree. And for this, uh, we'll actually make use of the tree-like structure of this of the model tree. Uh, you can see that there's a very clear hierarchy, which is you have ground frame located inside the model folder, which is in turn located within the main folder. So we can actually go back to the any script window and I'm going to type the same structure that we see in the model tree over here. So main.model.groundframe, which represents the, the hierarchy that you see in the model tree on the left. Now, one more thing to notice was that there wasn't really a, a new object that we're creating over here. So we've already created the ground frame elsewhere and we are merely tapping the ground segment one joint object. We're just merely tapping it on the shoulder and saying, hey, the ground frame you're looking for is actually here. And that is why we have a ampersand in front of ground. Uh, so the ampersand is what we call a pointer, which those of you familiar with C and C++ would probably be very well acquainted by, acquainted with. And uh, the function of the pointer is just to tell the ground segment one that it's the ground segment one joint that uh, the ground frame is actually not, we're not recreating it over here, but we're just pointing to the ground frame that has already been created elsewhere in the model tree. And that is the reason why the name of this particular class doesn't matter as well, because it's just a pointer. 
Now I can go down here to my second uh, reference frame and over here this is of course the the frame on segment one so I'm going to call this segment one node uh, let's just put an underscore over there so that it becomes a little more readable and then I have some placeholder text over here which needs to be replaced with uh, the appropriate address for the segment one node for this we'll search for the segment one node in the model tree on the left of your screen and over here I will scroll all the way down until I find ground connection node which was the node that we created on segment one uh, now I could do what I did with uh, the ground frame which was manually type it in but I'll show you something slightly different right now now what I can do to get the full address of ground connection node is to right click on ground connection node in the model tree and say insert object name and note that I've already highlighted the placeholder text in any script so it'll insert the object name instead of the placeholder text so now if you were to look at the any script window again you will see that the full address of ground connection node has automatically been included so this again minimizes the amount of manual effort that you need to put into uh, creating the node oh, sorry cre defining the joint so now that we have everything we, we need for the joint in place, I can close joint.any. I will indeed save these changes. And over here, I will add an include statement in the main file, which is where we are right now. And this include statement will say that I want to include the joint or whatever code is written in joint.any. I can just confirm that there are no spelling mistakes by double clicking on joint.any and confirming that the file is open. So now I can go ahead and load the model again, which I will do so from the toolbar. So I'll click load model and the model has been loaded successfully as you see down here. Now I will click on the window drop down menu model view. But what we see is still something strange. We don't seem to see any change in the model view after the joint has been added. And this is because anybody actually uses uh, or treats joints as constraints and these constraints are enforced only when we're on the simulation so when you're building any body models and you've specified your joints and you load your model and you don't really see those the model being assembled in the way that we want because right now you can still see that the the node and the origin of the ground reference frame are still very far away while if they were a revolute joint then these two points should have been coincident so this is completely normal we just need to wait uh, for the next step of this tutorial which will teach you how to add uh, these or uh, add a simulation however in the section that immediately follows uh, we will be taking a small break from any script and uh, programming and instead we will uh, introduce the concept of uh, measures and drivers.